finishing first. Fighting out of the red corner, trained by Carly Meehan out of Body Punch Boxing with an official weight of 112.5 kilograms, breathing white G dot trunks with blue. This man is undefeated. Three fights, three wins, all coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Liverpool, New South Wales, Isaac Carly Meehan. And across the ring is this man's opponent fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Chris Terzieski and Ron Siamoa out of the crew gym with an official weight of 131.7 kilograms wearing the all black boxing trunks. Five fights, two wins, fighting out of Craig Eburn, ladies and gentlemen, Michael Sanko! When they begin to manage that in the center ring, Martin O'Malley. Big wraps on these two, Jordan. Yeah, we've got Isaac Meehan, undefeated 3-0 with three KOs. 100% knockout ratio from Liverpool, New South Wales. He had 15 amateur fights, two-time New South Wales amateur champion, as well as an Australian super heavyweight champion. And his opponent, Michael Seko, has got Chris Terzievski in his quarter. Rob Siamoa, he's from North Craigieburn, born in Brisbane, but now resides in Craigieburn. Well, definitely size advantage to Seko, 131 kilos, as opposed to to Mian 112. You mentioned that Mian, Mian's had three wins, three KOs, all have been in the first round. So has not made it past, no one's made it past the first round in there against this man. Again, a full night of action and a big uh, show indeed for big time boxing. A packed house and uh, many luminaries here from past and present. Kane Watts and uh, a whole heap of other guys at the ringside witnessing some great fights and also a big shout out of course to Mick Gatto who couldn't be here tonight but uh, Mick has been instrumental in creating these big time boxing events with Brian Armatruda and they're going from strength to strength and have showcased some absolute sensational talent and uh, I'm sure the fighters tonight as we just saw with Lilo Telepe there's going to be some uh, some great new talent coming up as well mouth guard drops to the canvas from was me and me and he's that dad Carly Mean, of course Carly Mean, what a, an absolute gentleman but also what a warrior when he was fighting one of the uh, one of the greats of uh, heavyweight boxing in Australia Mean, great fighting family Mean. also his brother Willis was an undefeated fighter as well but it's great to see Isaac back in the ring it's been one year and his last fight was against Syracuse stopped him in the opening round as Scott Brower just mentioned of course, uh, Michael Seco though Jordan he's been busy mixed fortunes but uh, nevertheless he's uh, had a lot of ring time a lot of quality ring time yeah the last time we saw him was in December against Hervé Silu Matha if you remember that matchup that was a close tussle that one but um, he lost by majority decision young men that are uh, certainly built for the sport and uh, showing some great athletic uh, dexterity Seco's ready for this one, no question about it. Doing some work with Terzievski and also um, a Tongan amateur heavyweight champion, George Holler. So he's had a nine-week camp to prepare for this one. But ultimately, this is going to be close to the toughest test of his career. He's been in with the likes of Stefan Iv Ivic, an undefeated fighter. But um, Mian's a different test, a big boy, and uh, looking to continue, continue the trend of knockouts. Seco is prepared to box, like he's prepared. He, he doesn't go looking for that big one punch, so he um, does tend to rack up the points. And that's going to be uh, that's going to be the challenge for me because man's looking for a one big punch. Whilst he's waiting, he's been um, letting letting Michael score. A sickle weighs down on me in, in a neutral corner. It's a warning for pushing down, for pressuring down. Me hunt having a little bit of trouble trying to uh, break range and and I think find uh, his flow against a, a, a big fighter like Seco. That's probably as you as you rightly said, Scotty. He is just busier, and he's more of a boxer than a lot of uh, fighters in, of this stature in, in this division. Usually they rely on the big brute power, but Seco's actually boxing cleanly. Boxing like a middleweight almost. Yeah, that's right. I think I'd give that round to Seco on, the, on volume that um, Ian was just looking for the, uh, for the big shot, and first time Ian's had to see a second round, so this will be, uh, be interesting to see. Well, an interesting affair. One set for four rounds as well, so they've got to get it in, got to get in and get it done. Seco having a good round. 
having a very composed round. Me and I feel is a little bit frustrated and potentially finding it hard to read Sekor's movements. And as you said, a 130 kilo guy leaning on you, it's a, it's a lot of weight, so he did get a warning for, uh, for leaning, but that takes a lot of energy too. For, Gary, from yeah. Man's point of view, pushing, yeah, you're pushing against a bloke who's 130 kilos. 130 kilos weighing down on your back and shoulders. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a wear down tactic. Seca dances straight back into the middle, as does Miha. Miha. But it's somewhat of an unusual guard with the palms facing forward. So uh, he's got a little, and it's almost his rear hand is m more forward than his jabbing hand, which is a bit of an unusual stance for Mike. Yeah, it is. We'll see if Mian steps it up in this second round. A good start to this second round for me, letting his hands fly. But Seko's a very good mover for his size. Very efficient mover. Potentially Mian having that guard to parry the punches. So maybe looking to parry and counter or can't parry and roll but that right hand being so far forward may may be uh interesting to see if it can generate that power the power's got to come off the jawline but being so far forward your shoulders already pop forward may cut the rotational power it was interesting for a guy who is such a big puncher that um maybe he's just toying with his style a little bit developing things as he as he grows just or oh, a bit of a head clash on the way forward there. They both uh, cracked heads on the way in. And uh, a big head indeed to crack with his Sekos. Yeah, he's going to say a couple of hard heads. <laughs> me, and, me and definitely biding his time in this fight. Rolls. Throwing that overhand. His weapon of choice, of course, of Mihan is that overhand. But he'll need to break range to get it onto the jawline of Sekos. Sekos has got a decent jab. It's got a bit of pop behind it. Just missed with the right hand there, Seko. Good movement there from me and on the back foot. It's pretty quick, isn't it? For 130 kilos, yeah. he pops those punches out really nicely. I think the anomaly uh, with Seko is that he doesn't fight like most fighters of his stature, his size. They usually they have more of a brutal style. Whereas Seko is more of a clinical boxer. And uh, sometimes that's, that's brought him undone, and other times it's, uh, it's held him in good stead. Tonight, Mian's going to try and break that range and get on the inside rolling with that overhand obviously a bit of a shoulder bump there to create room on the inside they'll get a warning for that so far this is a bit around from me and the old uh, inside shoulder bump he's landed a right hand he's landed a good left hook so far in this round but again it's been by a couple of jabs there but it's been volume again to Seko. so you know, it depends what the judges like i'm looking at Seko, and i'm going if i was oh a solid Ooh. right hand that'll wake mihan up Faints and goes forward, Seko. The only opening I can really see on Seko is that his lead hand is down so low, which uh, when you're fighting someone that is uh, has a weapon of choice being the overhand, well, how many times have we seen that strategy come undone because their lead hand is low against the, uh, someone who likes to roll on that right hand? Ooh, he's looking for it right then, too. He'll look to set that overhand up. That is Swing the neck of Seko around. Take him out. Nihan. Another, another interesting round. Yeah. Is, we're 50% down in this fight, gentlemen. How are we scoring it? Oh, I think, for me, I think Seko did enough to take the round. But it was a much better round for me. And he's starting to find his range. He's starting, he's, he landed a, a good left hook. He's landed a couple of right hands. So he's working his way into this fight. Oh, yeah. I think uh, definitely first round go to Seko and the second round is uh, a flip of a coin but potentially could be a Seko round as well with Mihan just trying to find the timing and the opportunity and fuse both together to get the stoppage. Well this is a four round contest so now Mian's really got to let his hands go in the final two rounds. Sense of urgency now from the red corner. Seko's gone the distance many times, but it's interesting because it's a, it's a lot of... Yeah, 130 kilos is a lot to carry around for the whole fight. Four rounds of that. I look, at the, I look at Seko, he's not even breathing heavy. He's fit. He's been well prepared for this fight, knowing it's such a, a big challenge for him. The young Michael Seko. No pushing. It's definitely going to heat up now, this third round. The... Uh, 
His patience has certainly been tested. Now he has to uh, bring the heat a little bit. Well, Seco is going to continue to box on the outside and keep this one at range. Height and reach advantage, Seco, and indeed weight advantage as well. Mian's perfect record. He's under pressure here in this third round. Needs to lift. Will the O go? So Mia needs to keep that head moving. Because Seco has that sharp jab, Scotty, that lands. It, you know, it does if he's got given the opportunity. So Mihan can't be lackadaisical about moving his head. That's There's right. that, that overhand right. And because he's 130 kilos and he uses that jab, he can keep you off balance with that. So you don't get the chance to just set your feet and land your big bombs. Cracking on the inside. The head to head, ear to ear. Mixing it up. Mihan got the, had the right hand up, was controlling the neck of Seko. Seko gets told for doing the same. Looking Popping very... jab. There's the jab I spoke of. So Mian needs to move that head. When he's not throwing, he needs to be moving the head. Or well, Seko's going to find it. Looking very comfortable in the ring, Seko, even in this third round. But Carly Mill, Mian getting very vocal in the corner, trying to wheel his boy on. Nice feint. Now he's getting a bit more animated with his upper body movement, Mian. Tried to find the target with the overhand. But Seko knows what's coming. They're prepared for it. Body, body, head. Good combination by Seko. Just yeah. rallying on the inside, Seko. See, this, this work on the inside here is, and when they were leaning on each other, is much better suited for Seko because he's so much bigger. Seko now looking to have Mian in a touch of bother here, gentlemen. Michael Seko and his best performance to date is raining down leather to the face. Well, Mian's grabbing oh. on. He, Mian's looking to... Mian. Grab hold, get the space now. Doesn't look himself tonight, Mian. Yeah, he's breathing quite heavily. This is the best performance of Seko's career to date, Hammer. Well, Seko, he can smell it. The jab, the clean boxing. You don't want to work get... for him. He doesn't want to showboat now. Yeah, he doesn't want to lose focus. Just going to say that because it's um, yeah, you're only 10 seconds away from danger. <laughs> you're a big banger One like One punch man, away man. from disaster in this weight division. The clubbing right hand, the left hook, the body, the head. Attacking them all, Seko. The 131-kilo man mountain is moving like a middleweight. That's the end of round number three, heavyweight action. And a convincing right round for the blue corner, boxing. gentlemen. A real dominant round there for Seko. Well, that was Seko's best round of the fight. He, um, he worked really, really well through good combinations. Had, uh, had me and actually grabbing hold, looking for time. He, he, um, that was a, a very impressive round. You can see Mian breathing quite heavily. Carly Mian going to work on Mian now, preparing him for this fourth and final round because his perfect record is really under pressure. Final three minutes of action. I'll tell you what, this is Michael Seko's fight of his career. We've, we've called him many a time. He's been uh, a regular here on the big time boxing shows. He's had mixed fortunes, but tonight he's looking, looking in good stead. Well, he's risen to tonight, hasn't he? He's risen to the occasion. Mian's got three right, minutes fighters, to do something to get him out of this. The fourth and final round. In deep water, very deep water we head. He's got a bit of bruising on the uh, the left eye, Mian. He's um, he's been in the war. He's worn the big shots. Has he got has he got the stamina to uh, to put something together in this last round? Especially in the heavyweight division, only one punch away from disaster. We know Mian possesses the power, but so far it's Seko's coming out party. Seko back to popping the jab. It's fast jab, straight jab, accurate jab, tries the right, switches through, still light on the balls of his feet, Seko. Again pops. Again. The big fella keeps firing. It's Good the hand speed. The boxer versus the puncher, isn't it? And uh, on this occasion, so far, the boxer has been having the ascendancy. That jab is just disrupting the rhythm of Mihan. Heading Mihan into... trying to find a way to roll and land that power. But Seko has worked the game plan. He's going to try and jab it down. He's pumped. It's actually all he's got to do. He's just. Throw that, just keep throwing that jab. Waiting for an opportunity to explode, Mian, but 
He looks gassed. You're not going to get it if you he keep looks, getting a jab in your face. He looks tired. He looks gassed. And he looks like the game plan that he had in his head has been so difficult to execute. Carly Mean in the corner telling him to rally, telling him to throw, telling him to work. It's hard to do when a man the size of Seko not only leans down on you, but falls on you. Lost his footing. He's got all the momentum, Seko. But he... that, that little engagement there where Seko fell on top of me, and all of that will take so much energy from Mihar. Seko smashes the body. This is what he doesn't want to be like. There's no reason for me to be trying to push against him. You're pushing against a 130 kilo man. He's 20 kilos heavier than you. The man mounted, and that is Michael Seko, the young man that's endured many challenges. But tonight, he feels it's his time to shine under the bright lights here at the Melbourne Pavilion on the big time boxing event. He wants to make a statement and show that he's worthy. Heading into this fight, Seko was the underdog, but he showed his worth here in centering over these four rounds. Mihart. He's up. Having seconds. the biggest test of his career, the biggest challenge. Tries for that overhand right, but just doesn't seem himself tonight. Isaac Carly Mihart has destroyed everyone that has stepped in front of him, but tonight, Michael Seko's had different thought process. He's had a different plan and executed it well. Steps back and will pop the jab to finish the round and finish the fight. And that excellent execution of the jab really did turn this fight on its head tonight, Scotty. It certainly did, and it's, uh, for any, uh, any young fighter out there watching, it just shows the value of having a good, strong left jab. It's so all the basics. He did the basics and did them well, didn't brawl. Clean boxing, Seko disrupted the game plan of Isaac Carly Meehan, who quite frankly tonight didn't look himself though. I think, I think he didn't get have his rhythm, he didn't have that explosive, aggressive fight style that we've, we've seen in the past. So tonight, uh, on our scorecards, unofficially of course, it's not to be his night. But uh, who knows, potentially a rematch, but it's uh, an interesting and exciting fight from two Man Mountains. It'll go to the judges and all will be revealed very soon. First round, I think the first round we said could have gone either way. That was a close round, but um, for mine, I gave it to, uh, to the blue corner. I thought Seko won it. Um, I didn't think he did anywhere near enough work to be given uh, given those rounds. Well, I got, you know, I've got, as I said, I've got ultimate respect for both these guys. Seko's had big fortunes, and tonight they continue. Unfortunately, I thought he did perhaps just enough to win. Um, Mian, you know, big heart, great prospect. Tonight wasn't his night, but that, uh, that scorecard conclusion, quite frankly, confuses me. I think we'll see a rematch sometime soon. Absolutely. I think it has to be settled. That one has to be settled with a rematch. So, uh, they're believing in the hands of the judges, Scotty, they say. They do say that. 